Last week on Saving Lady Africa, we made our soul inspection hatches bigger. Further down the boat looks like this. Simone's busy working on the next episode. Everything's in a bit of a mess at the moment. Moses is busy doing those those new frames that we've epoxied in. And I'm gonna size up our new bilge, uh, shower bilge pump. So what happens is, I'm sure you guys are familiar with these, they're quite common. You can see through there, it, it is see-through, it's just dirty now because it's been in the dust and whatnot. So, that's the pump outlet through there, so there's a little bilge pump in here. Inlet in there, two additional inlets from whatever else you want to bring it through. It's got a little, uh, what did you call it, a sieve or... A, like a little membrane backing there so that any big particles won't go into the pump area so it goes in there filters through there not really filters it kind of just catches big particles and then the pump's got an automatic switch in it boop, and pumps everything out automatically and that's what we're going to install and that means we keep clean bulges so it's going to be awesome here's a cavity that i cut out for it so here's where the shower is the shower drain is going to be over there We've got an additional second drain here, so if all of this, if this gets full of water for whatever reason or the person doesn't close, the water will run into the two lines connected and they'll flow into our bilge pump or shower bilge. And that's why I made this cavity bigger, so there's, so we still need to sand this, but that's where it used to end and we've extended that out. Epoxied it in nice and strong. Don't worry about the screws there. It's just taking a film over this. And now, oh, for a second, I thought you did this. <laughs> that shower will do fit in there. So I'm gonna make a little stand on that side, where she'll sit nicely like that. How good is that? I mean, I think that is awesome pump out of there then the outlet pipe from that will go out and we'll hook up to that one over there uh, after sanding and prepping you can see from right over there on that's the new section there's the new lid so there's the new lid there there's the new one there So here's the new door, um, all I did is I just took it out of the, the cavity and um, we're going to prep it and seek a flex it on and seal it all nice, put a weather seal in it and get down to it, get that baby fitting flush. So what I just finished doing is grinding out this edge that was a little bit damaged and I want to get right up to the fiberglass shell. I'm going to do a build up here with um, Ultra Bond, super tough stuff. I mean, when that stuff dries, you can't break it off. It's really, really strong. So build it up there, make a nice solid edge, seal it off completely from the wood, run it right around. Here on the base, I did the same. I'm gonna run a solid piece over there, flat, fill up that gap on the edge, wherever I felt like it wasn't perfect. The rest of this wood is in really, really good shape. So I'll just skim a, a, a layer over that and um, Get it all nice and secure so our frame can come back in. There's a new beautiful door. Up an awesome door that. Let's get to it, Moses. We've got a new cameraman in town. Hey Moses! So Moses is my cameraman today. Simone's busy editing. So we're gonna show you guys this stuff. It's it's um you can buy it from NCS resins. Otherwise, if you ask, it's a polyester bonding paste. Um, the stuff is super strong. You can apply it thick. Um, that's what it looks like. See, it looks like that. It's like a pinkish paste. But when it, when it so this one's got a bit of flex, you get another one which is uh, like a grayish color and it goes dull. It's it's not flexible at all. It cracks up quite easily. This stuff has a little bit, but when I mean a little bit of flex, very little flex. Um, Super tough, super strong, and um, we'll just grind it down afterwards. 
So we're just going to do a way out because I need, I want to be quite accurate on the on the two percent ratio that we're going to go. For. So today is quite a warmish day, so I don't want to go, I don't want to over catalyze on this because it's, you know, with with um, working with polyesters, you got a really small kind of margin. If you over catalyze on on thick layups, it cracks. Thin, you'll 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 probably get away with it, but on a thick layup, it will crack up. So you want to go really low, uh, maybe a one, maybe two percent. Today we're sitting at about nine, 18, 19 degrees Celsius. So we're going to go for for two percent catalyst on it, and we will mix everything nicely. Get a thorough mixing when working with polyester, because you got a catalyst which is a very small amount versus a high volume of resin. So you want to make sure that you mix so that every the whole entire um, volume of of uh, bonding paste. Gets, gets a little bit of, of catalyst. So I just need to add some catalyst to this little dispenser and this dispenser's got like milliliters in there. Makes it nice and easy, you just squeeze on this side, it rises up on the tube and pops in there and then you pour and when you want to fill it, you fill it up from this side. So pretty simple system, yet effective. So. If you're not in a well ventilate, ventilated area, I'd probably recommend that you um, wear a mask when doing this. If I'm in the back bunks and that, I wear my... This is the one I wear. I've got one of these 3M masks, especially for working in confined areas. It's just, firstly, it's going to give you a hell of a headache. It's unbearable and it's just uncomfortable. Um, whenever I'm grinding fiberglass, I wear this. Uh, I've had it once where I didn't and my lungs hurt that evening, so... I wear this all the time. Um, I've got different cartridges. This is for, for fumes and gases. And then I've got one that's for dust particles and that with a set of pre-filters on there. This stuff works super well. Definitely worth the expensive. In South Africa, that's like $120. So I don't know what their price overseas, but I thought that was quite expensive for a mask. But they're good, they're worth it, and so we do it. Got the scraper. Gonna get it out of there. And so I've zeroed the scale. I'll just add as much as I think I need. Another side to this is this stuff is way more cost effective than using epoxy everywhere. I know epoxy in the boating industry, everyone's always epoxy epoxy. There's many places that you can use polyester and um, you wouldn't be compromising on the quality of the product. The product will still be rock solid. These boats are all polyester. They're completely built out of polyester. And 95% of the boats you're all sailing on are polyester. So the areas where you see me sticking it in is right where the fiberglass is meeting the wood and I prepared the fiberglass. I want it to hold onto the fiberglass, not onto the wood. And that will seal that edge for me. So what we've done now is we've I've built up this edge and I just had some Maranti wood which is which is a nice good uh, not a hard wood but it's it, you know, to a certain degree it is a hard wood um, quite commonly used here in South Africa very nice wood uh, a little bit expensive if it's profiled but good so what we did is I had, I had a gap there and instead of filling that up with solid resin to do a build up I could have used a piece of foam. Um, but because this is still going to get closed with a piece of stainless steel, I sealed it completely. It, I mean, it's completely wrapped in in the, in that um, bonding paste in Ultra Bond. So it, I mean, there's no water going to get to it. So I pretty much just used it as a filler. All of this stuff is already it's gelled. So I mean, that's within so maybe 20 minutes. So that's already gelled and. So now we'll give it time until after lunch to, to cure completely. And I'll come in with the grinder with the flapper disc. These are the discs. So this is a P, P24 disc, is the disc we use. So to grind all the bad stuff off. So if it is old paint, um, the final coat of, of uh, glass, because of that, that wax that comes to the surface. If you paint over either polyester or epoxy, if you paint over either one of them without sanding that shiny top layer off, in five years time, you'll be repainting your whole boat. It's super crucial that you do that. Sometimes, not even five years, sometimes even before that, it starts coming off. 
So we'll take everything, we'll grind this nice and flat with it. I don't need this to be aesthetically pleasing. All of this will be covered, but I know that the structure underneath there is rock solid and we're not gonna have any more leaks. Nothing will seep through onto wood because the whole face now is resin everywhere there. Here, we'll, we're gonna put Seeker Flex on this side. We Seeker Flex it from there up to there. So she'll never leak again. And the awesome new door with the seal, that'll be great. So guys, if you want to build yourself one, um, polycarb is not the most cost-effective one. You, you could go for, for Perspex. In some cases, the, it is cheaper. You could go for thinner. We went for, on that one, I believe it's a, either 10 or 12 mil that we went on there. I think it's 10 mil. And it's a clear polycarb. That's what we wanted. Um, it's reasons we chose it. It's light. Um, it's clear, obviously and then it cannot break so if anyone hits anything against this panel here you know a lot of guys say toughened glass and all of that yes toughened glass is tough but if it gets hit in the wrong spot it's completely shattered you can't fix it you can't put it back together you're in the middle of the ocean you're not going to have that door for probably two three four five weeks that you're at your next location something like this if i can just find a supply of polycarb i can cut it myself shape it again fit in a new one if it for some crazy reason would break but it's it's physically impossible for that panel to break okay so we're building this interior frame and what I do is I just put these boards on here so to get those angles the, the stuff was built by hand so it's not perfect so what I'm gonna do is just take my pen over here and I'll draw while the polyester was curing Ricky and Moses got started on making the inside door frame So once it's all done, that's what we're left with. Rock solid edge right there. We're gonna drill into that and use that as our mounting sides. So we've run the masking tape around the edge and we've run Seeker Flex right around. Now we're gonna fit the frame. There's the door also masked up. Let's get it in. So there's the shelves that we were making. We just glass them over and they'll go into the back cabinet and to give you a side reference there's my foot so you could use them one we're probably going to put the water maker pump on and the second one we'll use for storage for oils or whatever the case may be okay so it's saturday morning and um, this is just the off-cut piece of polycarbonate that i got we've opted not to go for polycarbonate we're going to go for acrylic lenses uh, for 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 the boat so what I've done is I just put this against the side and we've drawn that black line and I'm going to give it a prime over here. Give it a little sand to represent the exact procedure that we're going to do on all the other glasses. We're deciding whether we're going to go for this. That's the two colors that we got. We've got the bronze and we've got the clear. And me and Moses are going to fit them there on the side there and uh, see which one we decide on. So if you can see, I've scratched up around on the inside of the line that I drew. I'm gonna prime that. So now this is scratched but a lot more than what I'm gonna scratch the other ones to, to just get that loss off the surface. Um, but I want to work everything on the extreme case so anything less than that will be great. So let's take it to worst case scenario. So that's the products we're using. 206 G B GP is for the fiberglass, 209 D that is for the polycarb or the acrylic and the activator after you put the primer. So there's the glass now with the primer. Just finished priming that edge. And uh, flip it over and see what it looks like on the other side. So the first half pane of glass is in. That's clear. There's the pane of glass. I'm gonna fit the second half from there onwards. I'm gonna fit the bronze one. So we installed this windows today and it's not final. These are just for sampling, actually for my wife to have a look and choose what color she wants on them. The only two colors we can get in South Africa in the thickness that I want. 
is the bronze that's over here and the sphere that's over here. As you can see, I used the wrong color, uh, Seeker Flex. Um, but what I wanted to do is, if there's any problems, I wanted it to show up now on the test panel. I don't want to afterwards, after doing everything, then find out that there's problems. So this one, I painted the border with primer like you should. This one I didn't paint. So there's it from the outside. The bronze you can practically not really see in because it's dark on the inside, but it's clear you see right through it. Stay tuned till next week where we start the process of repairing our bow's rotten core deck. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe below if you haven't already and don't forget to give us a big thumbs up because it helps us out a lot. Thanks to our awesome new patron, Daniel Kral. Your support means a lot to us. If you would like to join our amazing patron family and get behind the scenes footage of what we're up to every week, a link is provided in the description below.